Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel, and today we're going to do a stock fuel filter change on a 2005 Dodge 5.9 Cummins. In continuing in our video series of changing the fuel filter in most all light duty diesel vehicles, we're going to be changing the fuel filter in a common rail 5.9 Dodge today. This is a little bit of an easier installation than it is for your VP44 truck owners. So for the 2000, for the model year 2000 to 2007, 5.9, the Fleet Guard filter that this truck takes is an FS19855. That's FS19855. Commit this number to memory. We offer these on the website. These are genuine Fleet Guard filters. Uh, you can get them in three or four packs, buy three or four of them, save on shipping. It's always a good idea to change your fuel filter, change them, you know, every other oil change is always good practice. Uh, but the genuine Fleet Guard filter is what uh, was in this truck when it rolled off the assembly line. So we're going to do this installation for you today. All right, not much you need here. A good roll the paper towels. I like to use uh, paper towels when I'm bringing the fuel filter canister out. And then a 29 metric socket, um, 29 metric socket and a universal and pretty good long extension there is what I use. Um, Snap-on tools are the are big thing. People are always asking us about tools. Snap-on actually makes a socket for the uh, 5.9 Cummins uh, fuel filter canister. Uh, it is a Snap-on part number Alpha 129, so A129, uh, just a 29 metric. And it's just for, just for the Cummins 5.9 fuel canister. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our installation. So I, used, I like the uh, universal and the long extension here because on the common rails, there's a wiring harness that's right in your daggone way. So we'll just go ahead and take our lid off. Adam, don't, don't tear the hood off this thing. So once you get it loose, go ahead and take it to where you see it. Well, you've got it all the way done there. Then we want to lift the canister straight out. Now, I like to do about the same thing I do on the VP44 trucks here, if you've watched that video from us before. When I bring the fuel filter canister up, I like to take my time and I like to let it drain in the canister. That leaves me with fuel in the canister. So when I, have, when I go to restart the truck, um, it's just easier for the truck. The, the, fuel filter can, the fuel filter canister recovers much, much quicker that way. Um, and it's just just easier for your, your startup. So I'm gonna sit this right there. I like to just take four or five paper towels when I go to bring it out because I don't, uh, don't want to get fuel everywhere. So we're gonna bring our fuel filter right out. The fuel filter is inside of the canister. So this is your first time changing it on your truck. Uh, it's inside of the canister there, so be aware of the wiring harness wires. So lift her right out. You can tell that this fuel filter needed to be changed. Side note, this is actually Adam's truck, so we can fuss at Adam and tell Adam he needs to change his fuel filters more regularly. Regularly. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, what we're la what we're laughing about, folks. Is we wanted to make sure that we got the drill doctor uh, in this video shot. This drill doctor is brought to you haters uh, from one of our other tool videos that want to fuss at us for saying that our favorite tool is a drill doctor. But we'll get to it, haters. We're going to get to that. Okay. All right. So changing out your fuel filter inside of the canister lid. It's it is. Uh, there's several tabs in here that hold the fuel filter inside of the lid, and to get it off, you just pry it off. I can go around here. Some of these trucks are, the lids are a little bit more brittle. Just go ahead and pry it off. Then you want to discard your, you want to discard your fuel filter. Buckets. All right. There is a O-ring at the top of the fuel filter lid. So we just want to go ahead and get it out because we're going to change it as well. All right. And we just clean our lid up. Clean her lid up real nice. All right. Now, reinstalling the new filter, the Fleet Guard FS19855 is going to come with a new O ring for you. 
already packaged in them. These are sold by six in the case uh, while I'm working to get this out of here. Six in the case, so if you want to buy these by a case, there's a little bit of price discount there too. All right, so our O-ring on our lid, this goes all the way into the top of the groove there, the top groove above the, above the threads. Make sure you get it in its groove because if you leave it on these threads as you're tightening it up, it's rolling the, the O-ring and it can pinch it and you can have a leak there. It also makes it harder to tighten the thing, tighten the lid down. Then this is your uh, fuel stem here that goes in this, so that goes down. So the with no hole in it, the, the, fil the side of the filter that has no hole in it goes in the top of the lid and you just push it down. I start one side and then twist it and it'll twist on in there. So there's our lid to our fuel filter, ready to go back in the truck. All right, before we reinstall our fuel filter, I always suggest to get yourself a light and look down inside of your canister and look for just contaminants and loose dirt that's down in there. This has got a little bit in it. I'm not gonna put the fuel filter in there with that in there, so I'm gonna clean it out. So on these trucks, what you can do is you can simply go down here, uh, put a pan underneath the truck to catch your fuel, obviously, but uh, open up your uh, water separator, fuel drain out. Did I hit the pan? I hit the pan, I'm dead gone. So we're gonna drain the fuel out right there. You can see the fuel coming out. Once we get this drained, we're gonna go ahead and just take rags and we're just gonna get some of the sediment out of the fuel bowl the best you can, the best you can reach. All the better, more of it you can get out, the better, the better off that you are. A lot of that is gonna be the corrosion from the um, from the fuel filter canister. Let's watch my light go by while we're doing this. A lot of this is probably gonna be corrosion in the bottom of the fuel filter canister. How's your shot that look here? Look, look good. All right. Um, so we won't be able to get that up. Uh, obviously there's water that's in the bottom of the fuel bowl so you'll get a, bit, a little bit of rusting, a little bit of pitting. Uh, but to me it looked like there was some sediment in there that we could, we could get rid of. She's just about all gone. Once you got all your fuel out, you go ahead and shut your valve off. Just like that. All right. Now Adam and I are gonna change places and I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the bottom of this canister out for you. And then we'll show you what comes out on the towel. We'll use a clean towel. So this is what we were able to pick up out of the bottom of the canister. All right, so always good idea to wipe that down. Be careful what you're doing there. It's 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 kind of tight quarters. So, all right, so we're gonna get cleaned up here right now, and then we'll be back to show you putting the fuel filter in. So we've got at the bottom of our fuel canister cleaned out. Um, I just brake cleaned it real good in the bottom of it. Um, check, make sure I didn't leave any particles of the towel in there, so on and so forth. Use common sense here. But now I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check my fuel pump flow. I like to do this too. This is another one of those things where you've got to use common sense in here. I just like to get in the truck, turn the key on for just a second, let the fuel pump run, make sure I'm getting fuel flow out here to the, uh, out here to the canister. So I just do it for just a second just to make sure I've got fuel flow and then when I know I've got it that's unfiltered fuel so what I'll do is I'll open my drain canister back up for just a second I'll let the unfiltered fuel back out of here which honestly this is probably just a little bit overkill but um, you always want to make sure that you're running filtered fuel through to your injectors so I'll open up my drain one more time I'll send that fuel out of here Then close it off here. Then let's go ahead and put our filter back in. You 
got to use a little bit of pressure to get it down on the stem. But once you get it down, you can kind of use the fins of the cap to start it. Once it finally starts, you'll know it. <laughs> All right. Our extension and our 29 metric back on the canister. You don't have to over tighten this either. Just get everything sealed. That's it. All right, to start the common rail truck. Now, you just turn the key on. Let the fuel pump run a good cycle. This truck's got a Raptor on it. It's on a key on fuse, uh, so it's going to continue to run until we shut the key off. Um, normal conditions, when you turn the key on to the truck, the lift pump will run a cycle so many seconds to make it run that cycle again, bump it again, bump the starter, it'll run back through the cycle again. I'll do that a couple of times so I make sure that I've got the, the fuel filter, the canister good and full. Um, when I know I've probably got my canister full, we'll go ahead and start. Truck, truck should run fine from here. I let the lift pump run long enough that it should have filled the canister up. We should be good. If you start the truck and it starts and runs for a little while and it dies, don't freak out. It's okay. Run your lift pump cycle again. Uh, cycle fuel back into the canister. If you need to, take the lid off the canister. Check make sure it's, it's got fuel inside of it. If it doesn't have fuel inside of it, you don't have fuel. Uh, lift pump flow, so you need to check out, figure out what's going on there. Maybe it's a bad lift pump, maybe you, the fuse blew, maybe you haven't had fuel pump actuation the whole time. So that's how you change the lift pump. Whatever you do on a common rail, 03 to 0759, or any common rail vehicle you ever try, you ever check into, you never open the, the uh, injector lines trying to bleed it to start it. That's not how common rail works. You open them up to atmospheric, you loosen these lines, it'll never start. Uh, it's, it, that's just not how you do it. You can get hurt. It tells you right here on the side of the motor. See that big warning sticker right there on the side of the motor? Show them that big warning sticker, Adam. That warning sticker says you will cut your little digits right off your hands if you open these things, if you open these uh, fuel pressure lines up. So, I'm Wade, Thoroughbred Diesel. This is how to change a stock fuel filter on a common rail Dodge 03 to 07 trucks. And remember, don't forget, the part number is FS19855. Like and subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, please give us a call. Thank you.